The goblins had not noticed Rachel, Krusty and Bella staring at them. They were too busy arguing. You do it, one snout crossly. No, you do it, another replied. I am not climbing up there, the first goblin said, pointing at the open window. I might fall and hurt myself. Coward, jerked the one holding Misty. What are they arguing about? <coughs> Rachel whispered. Look, Trusty replied, pointing at the open kitchen window. A large basket of Easter chocolates sat on the windowsill. You know how greedy goblins are. They want those chocolates. Underneath the window was a wooden trellis with a rose clambering up it. One of the goblins tried to climb up the trellis, but it swayed slightly and he jumped off nervously. What is the matter with you? Another goblin sneered. Steady cat? Shut up, the goblin roared furiously. Poor Misty, Bella said, staring anxiously at her bunny. She is trembly, trembling with fright. Why can't she just disappear like she did before? Asked Trusty. Bella shook her head. Misty cannot disappear if someone is holding her, or if, if, if she is nervous, she explained. We have to think of a way to get her back. While Krusty and Bella were talking, Rachel has been staring at the basket of chocolates. In the middle of it sat a beautiful blue toy bunny, which looked very like Misty. Slowly, an idea swam into Rachel's mind. Looking excited, she turned to the little fairy. Bella, I think there might be a way we can get Misty back. Can you make Trusty and me human size again? Bella nodded. She waved her wand and in an instant, the two girls were back to normal. We need to go back inside the house, Rachel whispered, looking puzzled. Trusty and Bella followed Rachel back to the side gate. As Rachel opened it, Bella fluttered down and hid in her pocket. When the girls walked into the garden where the children were still looking for eggs, Mr. and Mrs. Dillon were laying plates on the patio table. Mrs. Dillon, is it okay if I borrow the blue bunny from the Easter egg basket? Rachel asked. Mrs. Dillon looked a bit surprised, but she nodded. Rachel and Trusty entered the kitchen. Rachel peeked out the window and saw the goblin still arguing down below. When she picked up the toy bunny and gave the bastard a little tap, several of the chocolates fell out and tumbled to the ground outside the window. That would keep the goblins busy for a few more minutes, Rachel said quietly. Trusty picked out the window sill. The goblins had pounced on the chocolates and were gobbling them up eagerly. Time to head back outside now, Rachel whispered and Trusty followed. Her friend out of the house, through the side gate and over to the hole in the path that the goblins had made. Trusty, can you cover the hole with twigs and leaves like the goblins did? Rachel asked. Trusty nodded and began pulling some fallen branches across the hole. Bella, we need a long piece of string, said Rachel. Can you help? Of course, Bella agreed, zooming out of Rachel's pocket. She waved her wand, and in a shower of sparkles, a long length of golden cord appeared on the path. Rachel grabbed the string and tied one end of it around the middle of the toy bunny. Trusty and Bella watched in amazement. They did not have a clue what Rachel was up to. We are all set, Rachel grinned, 
as she finished tying the knot. Now we all need. Now all we need is Misty's help to make my plan work.